This is the eSports exclusive presented by DX Racer. What's up guys, Eric and Mathos here bringing the latest and greatest in eSports and stage one of the Overwatch League is behind us. London Spitfires come away with the win and the only logical thing to do is to start changing that team up. Yeah, it seems like trades are coming across the board. First and foremost, London Spitfire, they're getting rid of some of the Pine Riders and Rascal and Fisher. These guys weren't gonna get any play time and uh, it seems like they know that and obviously London's aware of that. So they're gonna send them off to teams where they're guaranteed to get play time. Other teams are of course signing up as many Koreans as possible and while League of Legends and Riot have elegantly solved that problem, uh, Overwatch can't and probably won't anytime soon. The Korean creep is real, it's rolling in real fast. But these teams are looking like they're gonna start shaping up to be something special and don't think that's gonna stop the trade window all the way across the board through stage two. It's wide open. People can sign whenever they need to. Yeah, and even going forward with the Contenders League, I mean, people are signing left, right, and center, uh, joining teams up there too. Yeah, 40 guys already signed. A couple more teams have already locked up their rosters entirely. Things are coming down the pipe fast and furious in this off week. All right, well, stage one was definitely a success for Blizzard and the league in general, but was it a big enough success to warrant a buy-in for season two costing potentially $60 million? I don't know about that. It's, uh, according to Blizzard, they insist that the profits are all over the place successful and warranting a minimum $35 million hike. The problem is so deep. You're dealing with A, European, and Asian investors that they'd like to expand to that didn't bite the first time at 20 million with an unproven product, let alone the guys who are clearly in the most biased position insisting that their used car needs that rust proofing coat. Then we got the whole situation of VCs buying into brands they don't actually own. Do you really want to build a brand for $60 million where when you walk away, you walk away with absolutely nothing? It's really hard to say. These numbers are staggering. I don't have the background information to say that these things are $60 million profitable, but I am super skeptical. And especially with only one source, it's hard to believe that that's actually true. But then again, initially, the, when it hiked up to 20 million, people were screaming, oh my God, that's not gonna happen, no one's gonna buy that, and they did. But $20 million for North American venture capitalists is nothing. They do right. this on a daily basis. Yeah, well, we'll see, maybe. 60 million, 60, though, that's gonna leave 30, some pauses. 35 seems uh, a little bit more reasonable. Uh, Summit Series in CSGO, uh, SK had a rough go of it in this tournament. Oh, but, did they ever. Hey played three North American teams, and they got beat by two of them. They only beat Torque. They got smacked up by both Cloud9 again and Team Liquid. And for the results of the tournament, Team Liquid kept steamrolling. They went hard in the paint against Cloud9, beat them up 3-2. Super close set down at Summit. Summit's already got its up at second tournament lined up in October, but the most recent one coming up is Katowice. All these teams are invited, plus guys who qualified up like Gambit, North, Everybody should be banging. Next week is gonna be yet another bloodbath for the Counter-Strike scene. I do love me some Counter-Strike when all these teams flip-flop left, right, and center. Who doesn't like inconsistency? Yeah, I, mean, I sure don't. Tons of changes and CSGO on Twitch, man. These big tournaments, even smaller tournaments are blowing up. It's a dead game though. Dead, it's no. a dead game. Don't let's not talk about it. Forget about it. It's why don't we even talk about it here? Yeah, why are we talking about it? Uh, League of Legends, that's a dying game too, apparently. Of course. Yeah, they're all dying games. Backwards in uh, esports. It's no secret that the meta has been a little stale and uh, it's taken a long time across all the regions. You're looking at some of the highest game times you've seen ever in League of Legends. So uh, Riot has decided they're going to make some changes in 8.4 and they really did a good job of setting out the standards of what they're trying to do. Not only did they do a good job of it, but they went out on the forums and they actually explained why they made all of their changes. Primarily being, it's boring. There's matches that go on for way too long and nobody's killing anybody. So with the buff changes involved, a lot of the hero changes involved, they're hoping to accentuate the violence and get people to actually start battling it out in lanes and fighting over some of these buffs. Because I don't know if you guys have seen that clip of a super juiced cannon, but you don't want that thing rolling down the lane. It is coming from pain. Yeah, it's gonna turn into Battle of the Tanks. I mean, they're buffing Siege min minions from 100% damage to 300% with that Baron buff. A little so, yeah, yeah, they're bringing out the Banner Command, promote those kind of minions, and just start whacking down some turrets. Hopefully teams are gonna have a bigger priority 
over these big objectives like Baron and Elder Dragon. Because these 70 minute games, they gots to go. Absolutely. It's too much, too boring. Uh, but if you're stuck watching a game for 70 minutes, the only way you can do that and sit through it is in a DX Racer chair, uh, because that's the only way you're gonna be able to stand it. And if you use the promo code SHOTCOLLARS, you get 15% off all DXRacer.com products. You gotta do it, because we're still, it's gonna take more than one patch to fix this slow meta, I think. Yeah, but, and uh, you might as well be sitting comfortable while they do it. You might as well be sitting comfortable. Uh, that's it for Eric and Mathos. Thank you guys very much for watching, and we will see you guys next week. This is the eSports exclusive presented by DX Racer.